uh, lately, <clears throat> lately my nights have been disturbed by vivid and haunting dreams, all centered around a painting of an unknown but oddly familiar woman. In my dreams, I find myself standing in a vast castle. As I walk through its dimly lit corridors, I am inexorably drawn towards an ornate painting, a portrait of this mysterious woman. There is an undeniable sense of familiarity about her, as if she exists in some forgotten corner of my past. Perhaps it's a distant memory or a reflection of someone I once knew, but it remains elusive. I have made up my mind to embark on a journey to the castle of my dreams, determined to uncover the truth behind this enigmatic painting. I cannot rest until I understand the significance of this inexplicable connection to the woman in the painting and the castle that houses her image. I will search for clues, seek answers, and attempt to unravel the meaning behind these haunting dreams. I trust that once I confront the source of these visions, I will find some semblance of peace. Elliot. Alright. Uh, and this is by Stanor. It's on the Steam Workshop. I will put a link to this custom story in the description. Uh, let us begin. I wanted to start uh, YouTubing for a very long time, but I never never got around to doing that. Uh -huh. Frame rate feels a bit off. Um, I hope that's all right on the recording. Ah, I believe I have played the beginning of this one before. Uh, I didn't get very far in it, I don't I don't think I did, at least. Um, nor do I necessarily remember much about the puzzles or the layout of the place. Uh, although I recall when I downloaded this story, uh, people in the comment section of that were complaining about the way the, uh, the doors worked, how they are, uh, kind of loading screens? They're not really loading screens, it's just a fade in, fade out, what is that, uh, reminiscent of, I never played, did I already check these? I never played Resident Evil or Silent Hill, but I think that's what it might be more reminiscent of. But I'm not sure it could be. I could be getting that wrong. I already checked all these, right? I've got the memory of a goldfish. Quite often you will see that. Uh, also, I can't see all the time the bottom corner of my screen. My microphone setup is not good. Uh, so... Please excuse me if I miss anything in that kind of area. Some secrets. Ignore that sound. Some secrets should remain hidden. This book has given me a glimpse of the beauty and power of the universe. My existence, though short and insignificant, will be crowned with glory. I know what I have to do. But some secrets should be kept under the carpet. This book will never fall into hands other than mine. No, I can't hide such a powerful grimoire next to such frivolous books. 
I'll find a more deserving and less dusty place for it. In the meantime, I'll keep it close to me. Lucia Vanderman. Ah. Yeah, I, I don't remember this very well. I do remember that. Not necessarily that, but I remember there being a carpet puzzle now that that memory has been triggered, as it were. Can I pick up now some bricks? Oh, and sanity mechanic. Amnesia. Um. Okay, it's a hallway key. Yeah, we ignore the spooky hauntings and the... Uh... Yeah, alright. I don't have a lantern yet, so this is gonna drain. <sighs> That's... Kind of one of the more annoying parts of this game, I think, is the sanity system. It... Maybe it works fine for the base game, you know, the original story, but I don't know that it's, excuse me, perfect. Correct, I do have the key. Huh. Alright, I guess that's just a stylistic choice. I... Don't really... Understand, uh... Why they would choose to do this, I think... I would think that's just, you know, a bit more time-consuming with the, the coding, the coding, the, the programming, the, the scripting, uh, to make the teleports for that, rather than just using the, uh, physics-based doors that come with the HPL2, uh, level editor. Um, but, you know, they were going for something, I have to, I, I have to assume they were. Um, and even if it's not specifically, you know, to my taste, it's, I, I respect, uh, any creative decision made on any level. Uh... Take me down. Now this is a real loading screen. I wonder... Okay. I think I remember how you get in there, but I'm not gonna spoil anything. 
Uh, but I think that after that point, I didn't uh, play any further into this custom story. So... Oh. Hmm. This door? I can't interact with this door at all. Alright. I like the level design here. I don't have much more to say about it than that, it's... Oh, you know what, though? You know what it's reminding me of now is, uh... Resident Evil... Village. Was that Resident Evil 8? I never played the game myself. Of course. Um... But I have... Seen footage of that game and this looks like that sort of you know that one room which room I don't know I never played the game <clears throat> library under renovation we started working on the great library two weeks ago I don't understand Madame Vanderman's whim. Does she even realize the complexity of such major renovations? A portcullis to protect the main door. Really? And for what? Just one book? When I asked Madame Vanderman why this book was so important, she looked at me as if I were the worst filth she'd ever found under her shoe, and replied that it was none of the business of such an insignificant being and that I'd better hurry up and get the job done. Well, since I'm insignificant, there's no harm in writing down how to get into the great library, is there? There's a lever hidden in a wall in the salon of the ground floor's west wing. To be able to... <clears throat> to be able to activate it, you have to use Madame's key in a lock hidden in the fireplace. She keeps the key on her at all times, except perhaps when she's asleep in her room upstairs. If the second floor is locked for any reason, we always keep a spare in a room in the cellar. An insignificant worker. Well, it's good that you didn't, you know, sign that yourself. Otherwise, you might be in a little bit of trouble, you know, with uh, uh, someone who's into the occult, and there's probably monsters around here, you know, no one... Uh, no one any good amnesia custom story uh, well if that insignificant worker didn't get out of here then probably didn't meet a very kind fate uh, that's floating a bit you know Oh. I was just talking about how I remembered that, uh, the way you get into this level, and, um, that was it. But, uh, I wasn't thinking about that just then, and, uh, kind of forgot. So. Yeah. I'll get a lantern soon, right? Excuse me. What do you have to say? A bright light to open the way. 
a warm light to bring life to what is dead, bring us our salvation. So a bright light and a warm light. Normally I play this game very, uh, methodically, conservatively, trying to not trigger any events, but, uh, probably gonna switch up, uh, I remember this area, though. I'll come back to this later, I think. <laughs> I was just talking about that, and now I think, uh, yeah, I recognize that, I'm not... Yeah, you know, you know, you know, if you played this before, which I hope you did, if you own the game at least. Ah, shoot. Alright, fine, I have to do that. Um, highly recommend playing through this spoiler-free. Maybe I should have said that before I got so far into it. But, ah, eh, you know... Valve is rusted shut. But what is it? Primarioth. Primarioth. Oh, we're so close to the light yet so far. These are going to stay on. can't see that corner of my screen. A cave is... A cave-in is blocking a corridor in the cellar. I need to find a way to get through. <clears throat> I need to find a way to get through. Found a lantern with a wheel access to it. The wheel to access it is broken. I need to find something to replace it. A strange tablet in the cellar indicates that I need a warm light above the flowers. Maybe a lantern can do the trick. To open the portcullis, I need to find Madame Vanderman's keys to access a secret lever. Portcullis is blocking, blocking a large door. And this is the cave-in. Ooh, excuse me. So I have a key. Open the door upstairs next to the portcullis. I don't know if I'm going to play through this all in one sitting or not. We'll see. Uh, do I need a hiding place ready? I might. I don't really remember.
Explosive mixture. Harold is dead. The four of us, Harold, Kristoff, Alan, and I, went down the chemical container into the cellar. But the stairs in here can be treacherous, the steps are uneven, and Harold slipped on one of them. We dropped the container as Harold tumbled down the stairs, his body making terrible creaking noises. For a second, everything seemed to stop there, but... But the container followed my friend closely and crushed him with all its weight. Even if the fall could have left Harold uninjured, there was no way he could have survived this. And when we reported this tragic incident to Madame Vanderman, she... She screamed at us. She cursed us for our incompetence and carelessness in transporting this container of chemicals which could explode at the slightest shock. When we came out, although we were all outraged by her reaction, we realized that we'd been lucky that the container hadn't exploded and killed all four of us. It's safe now, deep in storage, and I hope with all my heart never to hear of it again. Okay. But isn't the valve rest r rust rusticated? Isn't the valve rusted shut? Machine room. So that's the machine room where I need to get those things organized. Get that elevator working. Maybe I just need to, you know, it's an age-old trick. Throw a rock at it. Throw a rock at the valve and see if that works, you know? Or maybe I missed something somewhere. It's possible. Oh, wait, was it always running? Am I stupid? Give me the explosive. A highly volatile mixture. Okay, and do I throw something at it, just like in the, uh... You shall suffice. Damn. Did you guys hear that a metallic clanking noise, like something falling over in a distant room? Oh, I need to just click on it, eh? Oh, no, I don't need to just click on it. Where is that? Yeah, give me that. I'm trying. Oh. We go. We make progress. Two F. Open the door to the second floor and a wooden crank. Yeah, I remember. 
remember this. Ignore the Discord pings. Oh right, I need to crank the crank thing. Aye, aye. That bastard. Oh. Well, hang on. I need to unlock that padlock, don't I? Huh. All right. Was that the sound of him breaking the, that uh, door? I'm gonna hide in here very quickly. See if I can't see where he is right now. Ah, he's over there. All right. See if we can't wait him out. Boring, maybe. But I mean, realistically, wouldn't you do the same? And OBS has the option, so therefore I will use it. Did he despawn? I, I mean, you know, it's possible. Well, let's take a look, why don't we? Well, waiting him out, uh, Seems to have paid off better than I expected. Unless he went upstairs while I wasn't paying attention. I don't think so. Open. Something on the second floor. The second floor of here? Didn't think so. But it's worth checking. Did I just hear a recognizable sound from the hit amnesia mod Amadeus? Oh yeah, that's creepy. You can unwarp my vision now.
different door on the second floor. Okay. Oh. Oh, of course. I don't think I got this far. That sounded like, uh... The skulk from Minecraft, you know? That, that new Minecraft update. And I think it's been out for a while now, but I'm still calling it new. To me, everything that came out after 1.6 is... I consider new. Yeah, I'm, uh... Not gonna talk about Minecraft while I'm playing Amnesia. Is this uh, a soundtrack from Amnesia Rebirth? Oh, this door is not locked. I'm liking this, though. If it weren't so haunted, I'd, I would like to live here. How does that work? Door works just fine. I don't know what the problem is. Oh, sanity potion. Oh, yeah. Forgot I have a lantern. That lantern might just go very underused for the rest of the game. We'll see. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those who uh, neglects to bring any flashlights in. Uh, Whenever I play Lethal Company, which I haven't played in several weeks now, but, uh, you know, it sticks, it sticks. I'll probably use this whenever the lights get, you know, very dim. Well, then what's the point of jamming it? Oh, it might not line up with the geometry, it's possible. Ignore the Discord pings, everyone. They're not yours. Also, that one wasn't yours. That one was mine. Don't... Jeez, I thought that was eyes. Eyeballs glowing in the darkness. We fear Madame's sudden madness. We were celebrating the progress of the renovations, which were nearing completion. William, Alan, and so many others among the workers had taken the opportunity to relax and get drunk that evening. Suddenly, Madame Vanderman entered, and we all stood up in haste, bowing respectfully. Since when have we been acting like this? As if we were her servants. I have no idea. She demanded that we take all the books she considered worthless, and with our entire stock of alcohol, set fire to them. We looked at each other as if the wine had disturbed our senses, but these were her words. We were to burn all the books in the castle with the exception of those she personally judged worthy, which we would place in the great library. What does that even mean? How can the book be worthy of anything? I don't know. And so we set to work. After a week, the castle's bookshelves are now empty, including Madame's personal collection, which she kept preciously in her room. 
I can smell the burnt paper all the time as if it had crawled under my skin. I secretly took the key to Madame's study and stole all the books and parchments that were still there. What's in this room is all that's left of Madame Vanderman's madness. As for the key, I'm keeping it preciously in the next room, hoping that the smell will be enough to prevent Madame from discovering it. I need to drink quite a bit right now. I don't really talk this much. Uh, and the... Ooh. Where am I? This son of a... Is this a key for? Open the door to the study. So I've got it. Key to the study and a key with some dry blood on it. You know what? Amnesia's always a little bit of fun, isn't it? A little bit of blood somewhere. Check. Is he coming this way? Oh, he's looking the opposite direction. Why I can just. You didn't see me! You didn't say shit. Oh, oh. Fool him. Yeah, that's the door I want to be going into right now. Whoa. A strange pedestal stands in a room on the second floor. When I approach it, a voice whispers a strange ritual to me. Really? Oh, it does. A beating heart ripped out and willingly given. For our mistress, we'll give our heart to the universe. She'll offer it, and we'll find ourselves. We'll find our salvation in the end of all existence. Okay. The end of all existence. So it's my job to stop that then, right? Right? That's the study. A slimy rhymy. What is this? Well, we saw it in the frickin' cellar earlier. You... Is it? Oh, it's gross. Oh, it's slimy. Everything. Whoa. Now that's slimy. Ah, a heart. You bastard. I'll hide here with the the flesh heap. Let's see if this is one that... Sticks around. Okay, he's coming back this way. Ha 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 Outsmarted, outwitted, and outplayed by yours truly.
premonitory dreams have always intrigued me. Last night I had a nightmare. I was walking down a long, endless corridor with no walls or ceiling, and if a light was shining on the floor, the ladder was in constant. I knew it was there, I could see it out of the corner of my eye, but when I laid my eyes on it, it disappeared to be replaced by the same void that surrounded me. And in the distance I saw a door, so I kept my eyes on it, moving forward at a steady pace. But as the door got closer, I walked with increasing difficulty, and soon noticed that my feet were stuck in a mixture of mud, bones, and blood. As soon as I realized this, I fell forward as if pushed by an invisible force and began to drown. A sharp pain in my heart woke me up. Suddenly I heard a noise in the corridor. The strident sound of a blade being sharpened. Heart pounding, still shaken by my nightmare, I grabbed a candle and headed out of my room. I walked up the corridor following the source of the sound until I bumped into v Madame Vanderman who asked me about my presence. When I explained, she assured me she hadn't heard anything and that I had better go back to sleep. When she left, I realized she'd just come out of the room she'd forbidden us to enter. As I was wondering what secret Madame could be hiding, I caught sight of a dark stain on the doorstep. I froze as I realized it was blood. I then fled, I admit, like a coward, back to my room, fearing that if I tried to open the door, I'd find myself plunged in a pool of blood. The thought of it still grips my throat. This morning I crossed paths with Madame Vanderman again, and when she looked at me I understood. She knows. She knows I suspect something. I'm afraid of what might happen to me now, if this paranoia doesn't drive me mad. I've got to get out of this castle as soon as possible. Well. You're doing yourself no favors by leaving your uh, diary note right next to the murder murder room door, you know. That's gonna get ya. It's gonna get ya killed and all. So I put this here in this pedestal. Uh oh. Wasn't that candle already out? Oh, a door open somewhere. Oh, I bet it's the one without the lock on it. Let's go take a look. <clears throat> Let's go take a look. Oh, it's gray or green. It's, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a recolor of uh, the pliant shadow goop. Lucia Vanderman's diary. A curious discovery. I can hardly believe the truth of what I'm about to relate. And yet my senses have not deceived me. This grimoire on my desk stands as an undeniable proof that all of this has happened. It all began when the elevator renovations were completed. It is truly an antique masterpiece bequeathed to me by the castle's previous owners, but no one was able to tell me how far down it went. What exceptional treasures could be hidden right there, beneath the very foundations of the castle in which I've lived for so many years? I didn't want to wait for the return of my husband, sadly away at war, to find out. So it was alone, trembling with impatience, excitement, and a touch of apprehension, that I took the elevator, despite the protests of the workmen. They finally managed to convince me, however, and one of them followed me, rifle in hand. I couldn't help but feel a profound disappointment. As we halted in the room where the workers had established their camp to conduct renovations on the lower level of the elevator, 
My eyes beheld nothing but a single main room and two smaller annexes, their walls crumbling under the weight of various tools and even makeshift bunks. There was nothing more to discover than the rooms they'd already occupied. I was about to go back upstairs when I felt a breeze on the back of my neck. In one of the annexes, a crack had opened up in the wall, revealing a narrow passage into the darkness. Grabbing a lantern, I made my way through the tunnel, leaving my chaperone behind. Nearly stumbling at every step, heart pounding, I laid eyes upon the most marvelous sight. A gigantic cavern, rock walls reverberating the waves of a majestic waterfall, and a ravine so deep it was impossible to discern the bottom. Fortunately, a wooden bridge crossed the ravine, guiding me towards a door on the opposite wall, which compelled me to continue my exploration further. Continuing my exploration, I stumbled upon ruins that seemed to be of Roman origin. In a vast chamber, an imposing statue of Atlas was supporting the ceiling, and faced a meticulously carved bath nestled into the floor. Undeniably, this room exuded a certain grandeur. But the most important part was in the next one. It was an amphitheater, overgrown with wild vegetation, its ceiling shattered. Two altars stood in the center. One was empty. On the other rested a strange grimoire, the very one that lies beside me as I write these words. Its dark binding, adorned with elegant metal embellishments, was basking in the gentle light filtering through the ceiling. These embellishments shaped a strange face in the center of the cover, and I couldn't resist staring at it. For how long, I couldn't say. It was as if I was hypnotized, called by this grimoire, this face that seemed to be staring back at me. Unconsciously, I reached out and took hold of it. A gentle voice suddenly whispered in my ear, Behold the power of the universe, child of the creator of existence. Well, that was um, a nice break for my voice. I appreciate that uh, voice actress and developer alike. Now, uh, you've done some interesting decoration in here. Luisa Vanderman, the engineer responsible for constructing the recognition, the recognition, recognition, the recording. The engineer responsible for constructing the mechanism to open the great library's portcullis seems to have overlooked some critical aspects. Occasionally, uh, excuse me, the key gets jammed, making it extremely difficult to turn, which is quite frustrating. This recurring issue necessitates his return to fix it before it becomes permanently stuck. I can't fathom the potential embarrassment such a situation could occur if I had to explain to my guests why a key is sticking out of the chimney. If this were to happen, I would have no choice but to advise them to avoid using the West Wing Salon altogether. Constructing the mechanism. The key gets jammed. No, no, no. This key is not gonna get jammed, is it? What is this? What happened here? This guy gets it. Oh, it's just full of more goop. Okay. So this is the library key. Very good. Uh, I'm gonna open this door. And I'm gonna run.
That's how you do it. I'm surprised nothing happened. Who was that ghouly ghoul? Oh, it's spooky. It's a spooky game. I bet there's an invisible wall there or something. Yep. Open the gates. There is no keyhole. There is a secret lever that I must access. Not there. This provides access to the secret lever. Not on that painting. Not in any of these drawers behind this mirror. No. Is the secret lever in the kitchen? No. is sticking out of the chimney. Okay. I was looking at the answer. But is this the right fireplace? go back in here. I'm gonna try jumping across the hole. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do it. Oh, it's an invisible wall right there. Okay. Never mind. This chimney... It's in here. Wait. The ground floor's west wing. Okay, sorry. Memory problems. You know how it is. These stairs. Through this door. Down these stairs. And not that direction. But perhaps through here? Is this the salon we are talking about? I missed so many tinder boxes. The guests would ask about a key in the chimney. To the west, to the west. What? 
I'm in the east wing, aren't I? If we're to assume that they start us off facing north, which of course they would want us to assume that, even though the likelihood is maybe, nah. That's east, this is west. Or maybe there was a clue somewhere that I missed. You. I'm a master puzzle solver. There we go. And we got a cutscene too. Now that is quality. Normally, amnesia doesn't do cutscenes. Think about that just a little bit. So. The creators of this custom story, or creator, singular, I should look at the credits, uh, is really doing a good job here. And this has some very high production value. There's... Mostly the lighting is pretty alright. I have... My standards are way too high ever since I played Amadeus. But this is good. You know, you, you used to see... kind of lazy light lighting all the time in some of the older custom stories you know 2012 2013 days whenever PewDiePie Markiplier were milking amnesia for all it was worth Studium. Can you believe people are living in places like this? Yet the average North American can't afford rent for a single bedroom. Alright. Trunk, trunk, trunk. A map. Oh, it's Espana. Yes. This note is heavily crossed out. What is it, that title? The Fine Art. The Fin Art. After eight attempts to trace the Fin Art, and twice the pages of writing down my fruitless search, I finally succeeded! Excuse me! And I can't stop my hand from shaking with rage. In the underground passage beneath the castle where I discovered my grimoire, there was also an empty pedestal. Leafing through the grimoire, I learned that it was to serve as a receptacle for the fin art, a crystal imbued with cosmic energy, which was supposed to open the gate. As the fin art was nowhere to be found, I set out to search. I set out to search for it through time and history. 16th century, first trace of the fin art. 
Salvatore Mundi painting. 17th century, a wealthy French aristocrat claims to possess a gigantic crystal orb, claiming it to be the fin art. I have my doubts, but in the absence of better references, I'll mention it anyway. 1728. The fin art is mentioned in the transport manifest of the Belle d'Iver, a merchant ship sunk a few weeks later by pirates. Recent searches have found the wreck, but no trace of the cargo. 1944, a German museum claims to own the fin art, and attempts to pass it off as a national treasure. By the end of the war, the orb had disappeared, probably recovered by the Allies. 2013? A wealthy Frenchman had the fin art in his manor house. Two thieves, a man and a woman, broke into his home with the intention, no doubt, of stealing the orb. The woman was found dead, but the man managed to escape. Since then, he has been on the run, presumed guilty of murder and attempted robbery. As for the fin art, it was found smashed to smithereens. This last entry leaves me completely flabbergasted. All these months spent buried in books, trying to find the slightest mention of the fin art, and for what? To find out that it was destroyed by two stupid, money-hungry people? I must quickly find a solution to replace the fin art. Without it, it's impossible to open the gate. Without it, I won't be able to call him. And without him, there will be no redemption in the end of all existence. Lucia Vanderman. Well, you'd have to be crave crazy to be living in the modern day. And your gigantic mansion is lit with candles? No wonder. No wonder. This does not make any sense. Give me that. I'm lagging a lot right here. I'm losing a lot of frames looking down at that fountain. You know what? I bet it's the fountain. Or maybe it's something over there. Let's get those frames back a bit. Oh yeah, that's... What? A portrait of Lucia Vanderman. It looks like the one I saw in my dreams. But something's not quite right. She looks younger here. Maybe it's not the painting I'm looking for. I should keep investigating, but I feel like I'm being lured into a trap. Oh, you think, huh? It, it looked like her grimoire isn't there either. I should keep looking around. Meh. Elevator manual. We finished clearing out the elevator, which was far from easy given the fragility of the walls. We consolidated everything with wooden beams, and although it's unfortunately too difficult to change the elevator model for a newer one, we did manage to repair the mechanism. It's an old system that runs on steam, under very high pressure, but the whole thing is pretty fragile. It, all it takes is for something to block the elevator pulleys for the blocking system to engage. If something like this happens, here's the procedure to follow. First of all, disable that automatic door lock. It's a machine which it perpetually emits an orange light. Do not touch it. It's where the water is boiled. Next, find and remove anything blocking the elevator chains. If you don't, you won't be able to reset the pressure regulation. Once the chains have been unblocked, you should be able to engage the pressure device. Turn the wheel to lower the piston, which has arisen due to the emergency system. The steam should be pressurized again. From there, all you have to do is redirect the flow. If the pipe is on one, switch it to two, and vice versa. And restart the machine. If despite everything, the pressure system remains blocked for some unknown reason, go and get the head mechanic, and don't do anything stupid. You could get burned, fall, or even end up hanging in the elevator chains. Right, okay. Fair enough. Scriptorium. The Axis. 
is guarded by Atlas's gaze. Is that you? Is that you they're talking about? Guarded by Atlas's gaze. So it's locked up. And there's a puzzle to be solved. Involving the eyes of Atlas. Alright. I am going to call this episode here. If you liked uh, watching this, um, you can drop a like on the video, uh, and you can subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a part two of this, uh, finishing the custom story. I, I'm, I'm assuming there's that I'm already halfway through it. I could be wrong. Maybe at best it's a three-part series, but we'll see. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of the... Thing with custom stories is they don't tend to be very long and this one I feel like this one won't be very long but it might be we'll find out uh, thanks for watching and um goodbye <laughs>